Hello friends, today's topic is Poetry Recitation. Poetry recitation is one of the refined forms of speech. A properly recited poem becomes a pure verbal delight. Reciting a poem is a journey all in itself that presents struggles as well as surprises. Each poem has its own uniqueness and rhythm. American author Arthur H. R. Fairchild once said, the true enjoyment of poetry demands effort, steadiness of purpose, sometimes even pain to achieve it. Well, it clearly suggests that poetry recitation is a highly skillful and an extraordinary art. Understanding the poem is one of the most important aspects of poetry recitation. All poems have a literal meaning. Often, they also have a figurative meaning. You can try to analyze the poem yourself, but it's probably far easier to read what others have said about it. From published criticism, you can learn about things such as themes, symbolism, and voice. It's also good to learn about the poet and what he or she was doing at the time the poem was written. Study the meanings of words or literary styles that may be unfamiliar to you. If the recitation is unclear to you, it will also be unclear and uninteresting to your listeners. Learning to memorize poetry is a skill that spills over into many areas of life and education. The ability to memorize anything in a systematic way will help train the brain to remember facts, statistics and names. The brain loves repetition and memorizing a poem not only enriches literary knowledge but also makes memorization a complete fun. Now we come to reformation. Now it's time to reformat the poem in a more natural way. Learn the poem again without relying on the sing-song rhythm that helped you initially memorize it. Poetry recitation in front of a live audience. Reciting poetry requires much more than simply memorizing a poem. Learning the meaning of the poem and to deliver it in a way that is understandable and interesting to the listener is also very, very important. Following points are to be kept in mind at the time of poetry recitation. Stand up straight and speak from your diaphragm. Remember to project your voice to the back of the audience. The bigger the audience, the bigger that expression will have to be. All the words should be pronounced correctly. Tone, pitch, volume, rate and phrasing greatly enhance the recitation. Tone of the voice reveals your feelings about your poem. Questions and statements require different voice pitch. Gliding your voice up and down adds color and feeling to the recitation. Let your volume match the mood of the text. Vary the rate of recitation with the mood of the text. Group the words into meaningful phrases so that thoughts and images of the poet could be conveyed properly. Now look at this performance. When it is finally ours, this freedom, this liberty, this beautiful and terrible thing, needful to man as air, usable as earth. When it belongs at last to all. When it is truly instinct. Brain matter, diastole, systole, reflex, action. When it is finally one. 
when it is more than the gaudy mumbo jumbo of politicians. This man, this Douglas, this former slave, this Negro beaten to his knees, exiled, visioning a world where none is lonely, none hunted, alien. This man, superb in love and logic, this man shall be remembered. Oh, not with statutes rhetoric, not with legends and poems and wreaths of bronze alone, but with the lives grown out of his life, the lives fleshing his dream of the beautiful, needful thing. You have just seen a fantastic performance by S.A. Henry. She has a wonderful stage presence. Her performance is understated yet inspired, not over dramatic. Her emphatic praising gives a quiet dignity and strength to this poem's elemental language and lofty subject matter. Her variation is just outstanding. The poem reciter should be at ease and comfort with the audience. Engagement with the audience through physical presence is must. Relax and natural posture helps the reciter in building his confidence. It includes appropriate body language and eye contact without appearing artificial. Look at this piece of poetry recitation. If when my wife is sleeping and the baby and Kathleen are sleeping and the sun is a flame white disc in silken mist above shining trees. If I in my north room dance naked grotesquely before my mirror waving my shirt round my head and singing softly to myself. I am lonely, lonely. I was born to be lonely. I am best so. If I admire my arms, my face, my shoulders, flanks, buttocks against the yellow drawn shades. Who shall say I am not the happy genius of my household? In this performance, Farley successfully navigates the duality of tone in this bittersweet poem. His eye contact and body language, at times intense and direct, at times, softened and playful, reveal his clear grasp of the poem's melancholy undercurrent amidst its whimsy. Farley provides an intimate and ultimately endearing portrait of the narrator, captivating the audience by what it means to be alone and to be human. Recitation is about conveying a poem's sense with its language. The style of delivery is more about oral interpretation than dramatic enactment. A strong performance will rely on a powerful internalization of the poem rather than distracting dramatic gestures. You represent the poem's voice, not a character's. The dramatization subtly underscores the meaning of the poem without becoming the focal point. Now you just look at this piece of poetry recitation. There's a truth, limits man. A truth 
prevents his going any further. The world is changing. The world knows it's changing. Heavy is the sorrow of the day. The old have a look of doom. The young mistake their fate in that look. That is truth, but it isn't all truth. Life has meaning. I do not know the meaning. Even when I felt it were meaningless, I hoped and prayed and sought a meaning. It wasn't all frolic poesy. There were dues to pay, summoning death and God. I'd a while dare to tackle them. Death proved meaningless without life. Yes, the world is changing, but death remains the same. It takes man away from life. The only meaning he knows. And usually, it is a sad business, this death. I had an innocence. I had a seriousness. I had a humor saved me from amateur philosophy. I am able to contradict my beliefs. I am able, able because I want to know the meaning of everything, yet sit I like a brokenness, moaning, oh, what responsibility I put on thee, Gregory, death and God. Hard. Hard. It's hard. I learned life for no dream. I learned truth, deceived. Man is not God. Life is a century, and death, an instant. As you have just seen here, Jackson's gestures and body language help to guide the poem's tonal shifts as he embodies the narrator's internal struggle from frustration and anxiety to understanding and peace. Jackson's thoughtful pacing and intonation are praiseworthy. The meaning of the poem should be powerfully and clearly conveyed to the audience. The interpretation deepens and enlivens the poem. Meaning, themes, allusions, irony, tones of voice, and other nuances should be captured by the performance. Now, have a look at this one. My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done? If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak. Yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare. Wow, what a wonderful performance. Alison masters the language from another era and makes it clear for the audience. She represents the strong rhyme scheme well with no sing-song quality. The beauty of the language emerges as the recitation progresses. Now we come to the conclusion of this episode. Poetry recitation is indeed a very skillful art. When giving a recitation of poetry, a speaker wants his presentation to be interesting and inspiring to his listeners. An engaging recitation begins with a speaker selecting a work that has meaning for him, spending time memorizing it and committing to constant practice of the presentation. For this, 
we come to the end of this lecture. I sign off and leave you with this beautiful piece of poetry recitation by Yusuf Diaz, who won America's National Championship of the Poetry Recitation Contest in the year 2011. Thank you very much. My name is Yusuf Diaz, and for the past two years I've been involved in the National Poetry Recitation Contest called Poetry Out Loud, sponsored by the National Endowment for the Arts and the Poetry Foundation. And tonight I'll be reciting a poem written by Sharon Olds called Mrs. Krikorian. And it's Sharon Olds' way of honoring a wonderful teacher she must have had in sixth grade. And it seems that she wasn't very well behaved in sixth grade. And to be honest, neither was I. And the poem really spoke to me. And it was the first poem that piqued my interest in participating in the competition. So here it is. Mrs. Krikorian by Sharon Olds. She saved me. When I arrived in sixth grade, a known criminal, the new teacher asked me to stay after school the first day. She said, I've heard about you. She was a tall woman with a deep crevice between her breasts and a large, calm nose. She said, this is a special library pass. As soon as you finish your hour's work, that hour's work that took 10 minutes, and then the devil glanced into the room and found me empty, a house standing open. You can go to the library. Every hour, I'd zip through the work in a dash and slip out of my seat as if out of God's side and sail down to the library, solo through the empty, powerful halls, flash my pass, and stroll over to the dictionary to look up the most interesting word I knew, spank. <laughs> Dipping two fingers into the jar of library paste to suck that tart mucilage as I came to the page with the cocker spaniel silks curling up like the fine steam of the body. <sighs> After spank and breast, <laughs> I'd move on to Abe Lincoln and Helen Keller, safe in their goodness till the bell. Thanks to Mrs. Krikorian, amiable giantess with the kind eyes. When she asked me to write a play and direct it, and it was a flop, and I hid in the coat closet. She brought me a candy cane. As you lay a peppermint on the tongue, and the worm will come up out of the bowel to get it. And so I was emptied of Lucifer and filled with school glue and Eros and Amelia Earhart, saved by Mrs. Krikorian. And who had saved Mrs. Krikorian? When the Turks came across Armenia, who slid her into the belly of a quilt? Who locked her in a chest? Who mailed her to America? And that one who saved her, and that one who saved her, to save the one who saved Mrs. Krikorian, who was standing there, on the sill of sixth grade, a wide-hipped angel, smoky hair standing up weightless all around her head. I end up owing my soul to so many, to the Armenian nation. One more soul, someone jammed behind a stove, drove deep into a crack in a wall shoved under a bed. I would wake up in the morning under my bed, not knowing how I had got there, and lie in the dusk, the dust balls beside my face round and ashen, shining slightly, 
with the eerie comfort of what is neither good nor evil. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you.